Welcome to Break for Art. My name is Sarah Greenberg, and I am the manager of adult programs at the Dallas Museum of Art. Today, we are going to spend some time looking closely at this Maya cylindrical vessel from somewhere between 682 and 701 CE. If you haven't already, click this video into full screen so you can focus fully on the details of this painted ceramic vessel. To get a better view of the whole composition, we are going to look at a rollout image of this vessel. Feel free to hit pause here and take a few moments in silence to scan over the artwork and try to decipher what is going on. As you're looking, I invite you to consider, how many figures do you see and what does it look like they are doing? When you've had enough time alone with this work, hit play and we will explore some key points of interest together. Where were your eyes first drawn? Where does it seem like the main action is happening? In the scene on this vessel, we see four figures dressed in elaborate costumes engaged in active poses. The two figures on either end have their arms raised and the two in the center seem to be the most highly activated with the one on the left lifting his back heel and leaning forward and the one on the right appearing to be caught in a moment of high intensity as he falls to one knee and thrusts his upper body towards the round brown circle flying at him. If we look closely, we see that the artist attempted to highlight the movement of the scene even further by animating elements of the player's costumes. Observe how the waist tie on the central left figure and the feather on the headdress of the central right figure fly upward as if caught on the breeze created by the figure's swift movements. This sense of movement is directed towards the round brown object at center that represents the solid rubber ball that the Maya used in the widespread and long-standing Mesoamerican ball game. The ball was usually about the size of a modern soccer ball and weighed about eight pounds. In the scene depicted here, the ball appears much larger than any archaeological findings support when we compare its proportions to that of the figures. This not only underscores the ball's importance in this scene, but emphasizes its physical weight and therefore helps the viewer understand the athletic demands of playing the game. While the rules of the game varied from place to place, we can use artifacts such as this to reconstruct an understanding of how the game was played. The player on his knees is trying to hit the ball back into play with the big padded belt around his waist known as a yoke. Maya players were not allowed to use their hands to keep the ball in motion, only their hips, thighs, or upper arms. Each of the four players wears a hip protector, a hide apron, a padded guard on one forearm, and a knee pad on one knee indicating that impact from the ball could cause damage if a player was not properly suited. Notice the extreme care the artist has taken to meticulously delineate the details of the player's costumes. From the tiny ridges in the arm pads to the cross-hatched pattern in the headdress, the patience and steady hand required to paint such fine details is evident. While some areas are worn away from use in the passage of time, most of the painting's intricate line work is preserved and says something about the significance and pride placed on the beauty of Maya pageantry. This vessel also tells us that the teams were comprised of at least two people and that the objective was to hit the ball from one side of the field to the other. Players may have also scored points by hitting or interacting with the ball court markers, such as the one seen here separating the two teams, or lines painted on the plaster-covered floors, possibly suggested by the thin black lines that run perpendicular to the stone ball court marker in the central plane aisle. On either end of this vignette, the figures are flanked by vertical columns of hieroglyphs that serve two purposes. From a practical perspective, they show the physical parameters of the game court. But even more revealing, they provide the names of two royal people from different cities in modern-day Guatemala. One of them is identified as the owner of this vessel and a young warrior. The other is referred to as a strong youth and is most likely one of the ballplayers. 
These captions could indicate that the players came from different clans or political groups, and this ballgame scenario may have been an important diplomatic encounter. This vessel, then, can be understood as a commemoration of one royal visiting another in a neighboring kingdom for an inner kingdom sporting contest. Like many sporting events today, the ball game was a time when kingdoms could meet, trade, battle, and create alliances through the shared language of the ball game. But perhaps more importantly, it was also a time when kingdoms could unite and collectively manifest their common belief system by bridging the earthly world with the supernatural. These games were far more than just a sport or pastime. They were often part of ritual ceremonies that reenacted the mythical ball game from the Maya creation story in which the hero twins played ball and triumphed over the lords of the underworld. Maya gods were also believed to perform this origin narrative through the ball game. Distinguished by deer, water lily, and bird headdresses, the human players could be seen as impersonating various deities as a means of contacting the supernatural. When the game was in play, it was ultimately a metaphor for life, death, and regeneration, and could result in serious political, religious, and agricultural consequences. As much as this vessel is a vehicle for storytelling, it also has another function as a drinking or serving cup. Located just above the man with the deer head headdress around the rim of the vessel is the glyph for cacao, which we know is chocolate, an important food that originated in the Americas. Since the cacao glyph is present on this vessel, this indicates that it was used to hold a cacao beverage. Do you think this was a vessel for daily use or for special occasions? Why? I hope you enjoyed slowing down with me today to take a closer look at this Maya ceramic vessel, and I look forward to seeing you soon at the Dallas Museum of Art.